So hello everybody. In this video with the title Are These Workstations? I want to look a little bit in can these MPCs enforced from Akai used in a live context like a workstation coming from Korg, Roland or Yamaha usual things. You might be aware that I did a Bitwig adaption of the door control for the MPC enforced so you can use the MPC enforced to control Bitwig also with the touchscreen which is a really nice implementation and so it was the first time I got in touch with this MPC series I was really surprised how powerful the sound engine is and how easy is it to get into some multi samples and play them also with the keyboard so I was wondering if this could replace your usual Korg, Yamaha or Roland workstations for a live context and so in this video I will show you hands-on if this is possible how it works feels is it easy or not and I hope you get then also an impression if this is usable or not. So first let's let's have a look at what we are up to. So this is the top-notch high-end workstations from Korg, the Kronos, or meanwhile the Nautilus, or the Roland Phantom, and the Montage. And all these devices going with the word workstation. So let's first have a little bit of clarification. What is the term workstation? Where it is coming from? I think the first device which had this name was a good old Korg M1, and it had these I a sequencer, and you can play multiple sounds at once. And so create your song but what we are after is here and what many live keyboarders now use it nowadays is that you can play multiple sounds in a live context for that you're looking for the following features so you want to layer sounds stack sounds you want to split sounds with a left hand player bass with a right pad sound for example you want to quickly be able to switch between sounds so from a piano to a choir or something like that and you want to also have in the best case also a set list directly in your device and maybe even look at some lead sheets. Nowadays also you want to have some additional features like you want to integrate in your main device additional synths like an analog synth for example or you want to have some backing tracks so you need some audio tracks or you want to fire up some clips or scenes in the background to also have some effects going and you want to easily get your sampled VSTs for example so you want to have the high quality sounds you do in your door while arranging the song you want to put this also on the stage so it's really a necessity to have a good sampler also multi-layer sampler where you can have different layer switches in the sound in such a synth the last one I think is the main area where the MPCs are coming from so they have very good connections also now with the MPC you have the ability to connect an additional audio card so where you can get much more inputs and outputs also you can have audio track not necessarily clips except with the force but you can also trigger some sequences so you can also have that and the sampler with key groups is a really powerful thing and I also did a free tool for that if you have not heard about that the convert with MOS tool which converts different open sample formats also from a workstation for the cork for example and you can create key groups from that it helps you very quickly to get the sounds into your MPC about these things there are tons of videos on the internet and therefore I will not look into that area because as I said that's the main domain of the MPC series so let's look at the first series which is also the daily business of someone who wants to play in a band with some sounds so how can you access multiple sounds at once and play them in a live context so what are the solutions here on the MPC for that as you heard in the intro I already did a little bit of layering and split so I have here on the left the bass going and on the top I have two sounds layered as well. A little bit for the setup, I have here my Hydrosyn connected to the MPC. It's going through Bitwig just to record it, but in a live context, you could just connect any kind of keyboard here to your MPC. And I also have here an expression pedal connected. It's a Roland EV5, which we need later for switching sounds as well. Let's start with the easy thing. How can we layer two sounds? Let's, for example, say we want to have a piano and strings or whatever. So let's go back here to the menu and create a new 
MT project. In the latest 2.11, there is now this feature of sounds, which was mainly introduced also for the MPC 6.1, so the keyboard version. And this allows you also to arrange the main icons a bit. So I put here the sounds on the left. And if you go here, you can access your different things, so plugins, key groups, and so on. Let's start with some samples, uh, some good old 80 vibes <laughs> samples maybe I have here. And it's also nice that you can map simply your directories from your SD card. So I'm using here the SD card, not an SD drive, which I guess would be much faster. That's something to look into in the future as well. So we have a little bit of loading time, which is also something to think about. So let's first maybe let's get a pad sound here. Playing pad one, I have some really nice one. Oh, different choice. Let's go with that one maybe. And we can now play that over the full keyboard. Maybe let's tweak it a bit so you can also directly I put your program edit. You can, for example, you want to have a little bit of longer release time for all the key groups. Let's put something else on top here. Yeah, why not a piano? But this time we want to have something from the internal sounds. Let's go back to the sounds. We create a new track by going here. And now we need to go up to get here to the plugins. And let's say we are at the tube synth. Else can we use? Let's go to the fabric sounds. Maybe we have here some pi pianos. There are pianos. Let's go with that one. So you see also with these uh, bigger sounds, you have a bit of a loading time here. And now let's hear it. That's only sounding now the one sound. So to fix that, you need to go here to your main view where you see your current track. And then let's switch here to the view where we see all track. It's currently configured to auto enable the playback if recording is enabled. So where we need to switch to is to either to in or to merge. The difference is in, we can always play here from the input, from the keyboard. And if you have merge, you can also play sequences in parallel with the same sound. So we enable now both to in, so both should sound now. And this works fine. You can now go to mix and adjust here the, the volume between the two. For example, you could turn down here a little bit. the volume of the pad to, yeah, it's better like that. And you can also add here a send effect. This is really the power here of the MPC. You have <laughs> really no, not much limitations. You can add insert effects, send effects, tons of them. And I think this is more than enough for a live context. So this worked fine. Good start. <laughs> Let's do the next thing. So if you want to say you want to have some velocity stuff, so let's say we only want the piano if we hit really hard and this can also be done if you go here to the midi filter of the track so let's go back to this main view again to that one and you see each track has such a filter here and let's say just for, for demonstration purpose that we want the piano only to sound if we hit it really hard so let's go here to the midi filter and there is a velocity range setting from 0 to 127 so on let's say the lower part should be somewhere I don't know maybe around 80 okay so maybe let's go to solo maybe so you can hear the better so nothing sounding I'm pressing harder and the piano starts to sound so solo off so this means now we can play the pad and if we hide it hard we got the full experience. So this works also nicely, but let's turn that off again to go on. Let's go back to zero. See also scrolling is a little bit slow here. Okay. 
So both sounding again. So this works also nicely. Now, now let's go to split sound. So let's say we want to have a bass sound in the lower part. And for that, let's go back here to the sound section. Don't forget to create a new track because there's no undo or anything. If you overwrite your sound, you have to start from scratch. That's also a little bit of an annoyance compared maybe to a computer-based door setup. But let's say a bass sound where let's go with oh, difficult decisions, so much sounds in there. Why not go here with a hype sound, new program. Let's say we want, uh, where is the bass, 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 basic, bass, basic, bass, hard, bass, oh, so many basses. Let's go bass warm, that sounds nice. What do we have here? That one maybe. Maybe something longer. Why not go with that one? Or oh, what is hard but soft? Oh yeah, let's go with that. It's a string sound, but whatever. It's just for demonstration purposes. And now what we want to do is how we can access the key ranges and key ranges are directly put here, which is nice when you load sounds, but if you're working then in a main area, you always have to go back to here. So it's okay. We have the bass sound here on track three. So let's see the bass should go here to the G. That's also not perfectly done here. You see here which note is played. You can then simply here go with a touch for the bass and this works really great also we should not forget here to set the input also here to in so it will also sound. You can also set here the ranges here in that view. Here is also the option to set the upper and lower part, but the key range from a sounds is much nicer to use, but it's a little bit of hassle to go there. So you need to go to sounds and then to key ranges, and then you can edit this view as well. So, and you can definitely combine the previous set. So that's already what we did here. So we have the bass here and the piano strings sounding as well. And you could also add more layers, that's easy. So, but the question now is if you insert here a pad sound or you want to have the string sound sound a bit higher, you need a transpose function. And that's a little bit of a problem here because I could not find any transpose possibility in the track settings. So the only thing I found is if you go into the program and this then also depends on which kind of sound source do you use. It's easy to do with the key groups, but not all the plugins have an easy way to set the transposition by an octave, for example. Therefore, let's show that here with the key groups. Let's go here main to the first track or oh, that's a piano that's a string sound so let's say we want to transpose this i also put here the program edit as you saw on in the global you have the option here to transpose before all key groups so let's move that up by one octave This works, so if you're mainly using key groups, this is not an issue. If you're into other sound sources, so for example, let's go to the second track to the piano. There might not necessarily be an option for that. Let's see if we can find here layer. Yeah, okay, so the layer you have here, the option to also have the octave up and down. So it's in most of the plugins, there is a way to transpose them as well, but it's a little bit of a hassle and you always have to look for the where this parameter is hidden. So the Korg and Roland workstations, they have everything in one place for doing the such things. And here is a little bit of navigating around. So, but it works, next one. Also, if you want to have an, another, an additional keyboard or even multiple ones, how can you trigger here the external sounds with the keyboard? That's also a common question and that's easy to do here as well. You can go back here to your track listing and you can always add a new track for a MIDI track. So let's create a new one and you can simply say we want to have, we need to go here to the view of a track four and you have these different options here and one of them is simply 
ability to use here a MIDI output. Which one is the MIDI output? That's one, the MIDI output. And you can then simply say, where do you want to have it sent to the MIDI output one or two, depends on your devices, how many MIDI outputs you have. And then you can also send program changes and the usual things. So this is really nicely done and easy to use. So, but now it's getting difficult. We want to switch sounds. So we do not want to have this sound at once or we go now to the chorus or we go to our verse and want to play a different sound. And how can we do that? I found three ways to do this. All of them have different advantages or disadvantages. So let's go through them. First one is to use sequences. So it's the sequence mode and sequence modes have the option to have different, to have different sounds again. You see, we are currently in sequence one, so we could say we want to have a sequence two. If I go there, nothing is sounding, so we need a new track for that. For let's just say we want here a new sound for that. Let's go with a plugin and let, for example, have something not a piano. Let's go with some um, synthy. Welcome. Why not? Let's take that one. How does it sound? should go for demonstration anyway. And if we go now to the, uh, oh, first we also should change that this is playing all the time. So let's go from auto also to in. So this is also fixed. And now we can go here to this next sequence and there we see our two sequence. And that's the new one. Let's go to the first one. And we got both sounding. Surprise, surprise. So let's go to the main section sequence one and we have, which track did it put it on? Ah, it changed our piano sound. Yeah, that's always something you need to be aware of. So it seems I was on a wrong track. So let's go back to the piano. So here we go. Now let's go to sequence two. So better take a completely new track. And we need a new plugin here. That's a dangerous thing to do. So we need a new one. So that's very, very dangerous. If you screw up something here, you need to start from fresh. So what did, did we want to have here? Or oh, well, let's also, let's stay here just for example. Let's have a Mellotron, why not? Okay, so back to here. Okay, so we got that sound and we got the Mellotron sound on here. So that's a way you can switch that. Also a nice feature about that is you can also change it here. So with the, with the pads and it also it keeps sounding when you switch. So if I play that and I switch that, it's still sounding and then I can start playing my Mellotron. So that's really nice hold feature as well. You should also make sure it's sudden so it switches immediately. But the disadvantage with that is that you need your hands to, to switch sounds. I know lots of keyboarders are totally fine with doing such things, especially I think with the pads you can really just hit them hard and it's uh, easy to switch them. But nevertheless, I would prefer to have something like this on a foot pedal because then you don't have to take your hands off the keyboard. So a second option we have is to use mute groups. Mute groups are here in mute. So let's say we also want to have this sound here in the first sequence. So our Mellotron, so let's go back to main. And let's say our first sequence on track four, we also want to have, no, it's on five. Let's, uh, oh no, we need to switch that one. Here we go. So we want not to have that one. We want to have the retro strings. So now everything's sounding. Let's go to mute and then mute, you can mute different stuff. So this should be, so it's gone and then you need to mute these ones and that ones. So that's not very practical <laughs> to push four pads at once, but you can use mute groups. So if you go here, you can put them in groups and let's say this is one, this is also one, this is also one, and this is also one. And what happens now if I go back and I press that, they are all muted at once. 
but still you need to be able to press two at once but in some context it or for some songs it might be easy to just add something or mute something to it you might go like this here in a verse and then simply add more to that if you go if you go to the chorus that's also something which might come in handy in some cases so what is the last thing that's the most complicated one i thought why not use midi controls there's no way to switch sequences which we already found out but is there a way to turn maybe the volume down or mute sounds with a foot controller and the thing is that the midi control mode can only control mixer things so like volume mute and stuff and also plug in parameters so there is no thing like switch to the next sequence or start playback or something like that that's not possible currently and that's something that would be great if Akai would add that too. I fought some weeks with that and it did totally strange things or did not map at all or whatever and I finally found out the way to fix this is simply to go here to your preferences and say reset preferences and after that everything worked like a breeze. <laughs> so if you also have weird effects on your NPCs and did maybe several uh, firmware updates it's totally worth pressing reset preferences. After that you have to configure your things again but nevertheless uh, you will be sure it's running more solid whatever that is so <laughs> keep that in mind what, what is the idea here i do the following currently live with a laptop i have one controller keyboard a 76 key version and i have two levels i call it levels because i use that word here layer for such a thing here so let's say i have two levels and with that you can pack a lot of sounds into such a setup so for example i have a bass a pad and strings and then i also need a piano and lead but not at the same time time and then I simply want to switch to the expression pedal the sound so if I push the expression pedal up it will play the upper level and if I push it down it plays the first level and currently also with the feature that I can hold also the previous sound between them you may wonder why am I using an expression pedal instead of a foot switch because I experienced foot switches you're not fully sure if you really hit it or by accidentally hit it twice or not at all also you do not see a state with a foot pedal so with the expression pedal you see clearly also on a dark stage or you can feel it with your foot if it's pressed or if it's depressed at the bottom so you always are pretty sure which sound you will play depending on the setting of the expression pedal and I was wondering is such a setup possible with the MPC 2 and I had a lot of ideas and <laughs> which did not work and especially with the freaked out MIDI mapping mode I came to another idea would it be possible to simply send this to the different outputs so I have the, the first one going to output 1 2 and the second level going to output 3 and 4 and then simply use a crossfade pedal until I found out such a thing as a simple pedal which acts as a crossfader so having two stereo inputs and one stereo output does simply not exist which is insane so if someone <laughs> is watching who can build such things that's definitely a hole in a market the only thing i could found is something like here the weather box from the guitar people so from guitar people mainly everything is mono only and we want to have stereo so i was searching for crossfade pedal as i said couldn't find anything so the word here is blend pedal as a guitar blend say so blend pedal is a thing to search for and there's only a few of them and the most of the few are only mono and the only stereo I could found is the weather box and but for that you also need an additional pedal so you already have two items and then you need also a power plug with that so it's already quite a complicated setup which tends to get more error prone and it doesn't make much sense to use such something like this in a live context so back to the drawing board but I like the idea between the two outputs and I still was still thinking is that possible and meanwhile I could fix now the mapping mode with the preferences reset and now I had the idea cannot we simply now turn up the volume in one and turn down the volume in the second one with the expression pedal we assign the different two levels to different sub outputs and then try to learn this in a MIDI input mode so let's uh, try that we need to go here to the mixer now and say where is our first so this one is the second so we need to go with that one that's also a weird thing you need to double click that one but not that one oh come on 
the output you just double click the output i don't know why and we want to have this on sub two so that one we want to have here on sub one and we want to have that one also come on on sub one and we want to have that one also on sub one there's also still all sounding because they all go automatically to the main output. So now let's go here to the MIDI learn. And this one needs to go here via the menu. And there is the MIDI control button. Let's push that one. And here you can control external hardware, but we want to have the opposite. So this is, we need to go to MIDI learn. And to make that work, we first need to activate that in the settings. So in the menu, go to preferences, to the MIDI settings. Here you need to activate control depending on from where you want to control it. I'm going through Bitwig here and using the Ethernet connection. So MIDI is coming here into the MPC with Ethernet. So that's why I activated control on a remote. In a live context, you would hear connected to one of the MIDI inputs, maybe, or one to the USB inputs. And for that channel, you would then need to activate control. Back to our MIDI control. And again, we need to go to the MIDI Learn page and we now need to click this plus sign. We want here now to control our submix track one and we want to have the sub mix one control the volume of sub mix one it depends if you want to have this up or down which sounds so let's just stick it like that so we want to have this volume and then you need to go to learn enable mapping and then we need our foot switch to move and we have now mapped it as absolute control so as expression controller so it's number 11 and we should now be possible to blend out one sound okay we need to go out of the mapping mode So you see, I can blend in now everything that's going to submix one into the other submix two. So we need now the second one also, but there is nicely a flip section. And let's add another one, enable mapping, so that gets active. So we need a second one. And we want now to control uh, submix two and also the volume but we want to have flipped so it goes down in volume when the other one goes up and let's map it okay so and this was the time when i was really crying out loud because you can only map it to one item so close to the goal i was not about to give up and i thought hmm this is stored somewhere <laughs> can we fix this manual and it seems out yes you can do it so you need to copy your project to the computer and on the computer you need to open your project file with that project file if you scroll to the very very end there is something called midi learn assignments and there you nicely find that thing that you have here, the first perfect mapping, which we had. And then you have the thing I just added now. So we, you should not forget to save that. And if you save it, you get this empty mapping here. And only thing you need to do is also to copy the things from here. So we also want to have the type two. So this is the absolute CC. The mapping channel is also MIDI channel one. Mapping data, we also want to have 11. That's what Akai doesn't want to do you. Why, why ever. Uh, so a five is here and mapping reverse needs to be one and here it needs to be zero. So we have the other way around. Then you can store it and also copy it back on your disk and you can also store this as a template so you don't have to do this all the time if you have a template for that you only need to do it once i already did that in a previous project to test that and i just loaded it up now and uh, if you go here back to the media control you see it's showing up correctly now we have two 11 mappings and it's also flipped and it's also working nicely so i have here one sound <laughs> And if I push up the expression pedal, 
you have a different setup of a pad and a base and you can also blend between these two so this is working nicely so next thing and last thing is do we have set list yes we have set lists but first, how do we get to the set list? So set list is if you go into the sounds, interestingly, and there is here sounds normally, and there is also set list. Nobody knows why set lists are in sounds, but whatever. Here you can select your project. I also noticed, which is a weird thing, if you rename your SD card, it will not find any more your sounds. So that's a little bit also of a drawback, but you will not do this every day. So it's also fine with me. That's why this one is not found. If you long press it, you can choose the project. So let's pick a second one I already prepared for you with very creative names. Which one did I load now? Two or one? I think we had two. And select. No, it's the same. So let's pick the other one. The second one. Come on. Select. Okay, so we have now two projects and you can now switch here in this view between the things. So this would be now the name of the songs. Um, so let's load the second song. It will ask you if you're really sure. You need to be okay with that. And here you see if you use a lot of samples, it takes a bit of loading time, but I think that's still okay if you do not want to play instantly the next song. But the thing is, as you see, it jumped away from that view. So to load the next song, again, you need to go to sounds, select the song, and this time it's not asking if you want to load it. Interestingly, let's try that again. Second one. Now it's also not asking if I want to load it. Interesting. Switching is a little bit of a hassle and also that's the only thing you have. You don't have any lead sheet option so you cannot enter any text or thing like that. But nevertheless, it's something you could work with. It's also worth mentioning you have 99 pages. You can also assign any any slot with a project so you could do one set list here for 16 songs on another gig you use the second one because it's not easy to rearrange these if you see if i long press that you have the option only to clear it and copy it so you cannot simply drag and drop around or move around here the set list items which would be a big advantage if we could have that as well are these workstations i think uh, difficult to say. Also, something worth mentioning is that the MPC Live is battery powered, which is really great on stage. If you have power off and it comes back again, you can directly continue playing because everything is battery powered. So something to think about as well. Final thoughts, are we fully there? Something that still worries me is stability. With the latest 2.11.6 and also with the reset I found, which helped a lot, I did not have issues so far, but fingers crossed for that. But I was would really be a little bit worried nowadays to go on stage with just that and no backup for it. User interface. I think you noticed since this video was also quite longish, it's a little bit of a mess because you have to switch screens much too often and it feels in a lot of areas that things just got added as an afterthought for the MPC 61. So for example, why do I need to go to sound to have my set list or enter the key ranges? So that's a little bit strange. And I think Akai should put a lot of thoughts into rearranging the user interface as the big players do. So you can set up your splits and layers in one screen and not need to jump between these many pages. Also, yeah, transposing of tracks, you've seen this is the issue. This should also be in such a place. And MIDI control <laughs> was quite a hassle. And yeah, I want to have a 76 key version. Maybe also 88 would be fine, but only if it would be very, very lightweight. I don't want to carry 20 kilos. I'm really interested in what are your thoughts? Did I miss things? Are there easier ways to do this? Please tell me in the comments. And until next time, make some funky music. Thank you.